Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear tips, inspiration, and anything you need to take that photography to the next level. My name is RC, and this week I wanted to kind of answer some viewer mail. We got a couple of questions on cropping and low light focusing. Right, just a couple of things that I would do from that. Now, Mike Sossman asks about the concept of cropping. And basically, the question was kind of focused around the entire idea of how much do you get it right in the camera? And there's a general discussion that happens, and a lot of people that are working in photography tend to kind of have a purest form of, I like to get it right in the camera, I like to get it right in the camera. And this is by no means advocating that you shouldn't try to do have good camera work. This is just a concept of how much of it are you thinking about inside of the camera versus how much of it are you thinking about outside of the camera from a compositional standpoint. I figured it would be a good time for me to just kind of just relate a story personally about how it worked for me. Now, when I got into photography, right, my biggest passion of photography isn't HDR as much as I enjoy it. It's actually environmental portraiture, taking pictures of people inside of an environment. Now, when working with that, a lot of the times, the God that I prayed to with most of this stuff is a man by the name of Arnold Newman. And Arnold was a person who really did some amazing work in the concept of portraiture. And one of the pictures that did it for me in terms of getting me started with photography, getting me inspired to work with photography, was a picture that he made of a pianist named Igor Stravinsky. So and a lot of people know the Stravinsky picture from Newman. So I would pose you this question, right? If you wanted to make a picture of a pianist, what kind of picture would you make? Right, a man playing a piano. So you think about it and you look at that as an assignment, you look at that as an assignment. For me, I was completely blown away when this is the picture that came out. Right? So to take a look at something like that, I thought was pretty intense. I, it was something that the use of you know, the space, the use of the wall, the use of the piano as you're looking. I mean, if you look, the piano looks like a note. He's the smallest person, he's the smallest thing in the frame. To me, I thought that was really, really cool. It was almost kind of like he reduced a lot of those elements to their most basic components. It's something that I would strive for if I'm trying to work on images. So imagine how freaked out I was when all of a sudden I was told that this was the actual picture. It was a crop, right? So, and it was kind of weird because it's like I sat there and I thought to myself, well, why would I think, like what kind of camera would shoot at that aspect ratio, right? I don't know. So to me, this picture was a really, really good example of here's a master, a person that, you know, is, is a master at his craft and they were completely okay with doing this kind of stuff. They were completely okay with working these crafts. As a matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. You know, we talk about, you know, decisive moments and working with this and making sure that we get right at the right time and, and take a look at this picture, right? It was actually one of four, right? So I think it's a great example to be able to take a look at how the masters did this before. Sometimes I think this is more kind of an inspirational type of, episode because I, I wanted to kind of sit with you in your head to think about the fact of how many burdens do you put on yourself when you're going out and making pictures. Gotta get it right, gotta do this. Obviously you have to do that. However, it's important to be able to note that sometimes you see the picture in the frame and you see all of the stuff that needs to go away and that's fine too, right? If you take a look at a picture that he did of Marilyn Monroe, Right? So here, these pictures are all part of the Harry Ransom Center, and this is the URL that's gonna be the website to watch. I'll talk about it in a second. But if you look, there's his entire take right, on this one section. Right? Some interesting ones, some interesting ones, some things that he didn't like, some things that he didn't like. And really, the picture that he goes for is this picture right here. Right? So, if you take a look at it from that standpoint, there's a lot of exercise. There's a lot of playing around that happens with these pictures. And in the middle of all of that stuff, you find one shot, you find something to work with. So just because you're looking at a frame that's a three by two or a four by five or eight by 10 doesn't necessarily mean that you can't look at your scene and go, the picture is actually in here somewhere. Now. Once we talk about that kind of concept, it's probably a good idea to set yourself up for that, right? Because I like shooting different types of frames. So 
I'll show you this. One of the things that I really like about the Canon 5D Mark III is that our live view mode can be set to different types of aspect ratios. So for me, that kind of helps me. Rather than seeing everything and then trying to see everything in the middle, I can go ahead and I can do all of that stuff right inside of one spot. Now, on the 5D Mark III, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into the menu section. Inside of the menu, you'll see here, by default, it's usually set on the live view. Obviously, you can't do this in the shooting mode, but you could do this if you're using live view. This is what it would look like. So your live view button, when you press it, it would show a three by three grid display, and it shows an aspect ratio of three to two. If you click on the aspect ratio of three to two, you can move to four by three, 16 by nine, or one by one. Let's just say that I wanna start working with the concept of one by one. I wanna shoot squares. All right, so if I click on this, now I'm gonna switch over to live view. You can't see it in the viewfinder, but inside of live view, look, there it is. So now let's just say that that's the picture that I wanna take right there. I'm gonna take this picture, and this lets me kind of compose it, and I can just see the square. I see exactly what it is that I want. Go ahead and fire off that shot here. Or oh, actually here, an even better shot. Kind of a little picture inception right there. Now, when you see the review of the picture, you see that bar right there? So that's the picture, and those are the two lines that separate where it's being cut off. So really, the square is the center of that. I thought that that was a great way for them to kind of give you an opportunity to see something a little different for more framing. Now, more and more I've been playing with mirrorless cameras, and this has been the camera that I've been going to a lot, right? So the Fuji X-T1. You can do it on this one as well. So I'm gonna turn this camera on, right? And I'm wondering if it's better to just kind of articulate the display, but we'll go ahead and we'll hit the Q mode. Now, inside of the Q mode, we'll take a look here and we'll see that we have custom settings. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and this only works if you're shooting with RAW or if you're shooting in JPEG mode, right? So fine, normal, or let's see, fine or normal, or if you're shooting in RAW plus something, right? So RAW plus fine, so you need that JPEG. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna switch this over to fine. Now, having it in fine, I'm gonna move over here to this right side and from here, you'll see that if I go inside of this section, I can shoot either three by two, 16 by nine, or one by one. So I'm gonna to shoot to one by one, and there's the logo. So you see it's shooting in a square crop. I'm gonna overexpose it so you guys could see it. All right. So that's what it looks like right there. I'll take that shot, and there's my shot. Now. Look, this has nothing to do with shooting the crop thing, but I gotta show you this because I thought it was kinda neat. All right, here. So there's my picture, right? We'll go ahead and we'll give this guy, we'll give Arnaldo a second to zoom to kind of modify himself here on the jib. But there's my shot. Now watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna hit my wireless button here at the top of the camera. Right, that's that button right there. It goes into wireless mode, I'm gonna hit connect. It's gonna look for the phone, and once that finds it, We'll go ahead and pair this, and basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the Fuji and, oh, sorry, there we go. It's gonna take the Fuji and pair it with the phone. So there's the picture. It says, do you wanna send the picture? Hit okay, sends, done. I'm gonna hit end here, disconnect. I just thought that that was kinda neat <laughs> that it did that. I figured why not, why not show it? But now I have a square crop on my phone that's been done with the camera. The point with all of this is just to work on the crop, just to work on the framing of this kind of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about how to be able to do that inside of Lightroom when we come back from break, but I wanted you to start thinking about the fact that it's okay for you to remove excess portions of images. That's totally fine. The only thing that cropping is going to affect is your ability to be able to get a standard frame in a store. That's it, no more, no less. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about focusing in low light and a website to watch. Stick around. Hey Corey, we're going to that new pizza place across the street after work. You in? Yeah, I really wish I could, man. I'm under deadline with this book. I gotta get it done. You're a machine, Corey. You're a machine! Well, you have no idea.
compositing mind of Corey Barter. Learn step-by-step -step Photoshop tricks, type effects, extracting, textures, Hollywood effects, and really badass 3D. Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. Your mind will be composited away. Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks, RC here. Now, I wanna tell you about an upcoming seminar that I think you cannot, cannot miss. Make sure you go to the kelby1site.com and go to kelby1.com slash live. Once you get there, you're gonna see all of our seminars, but the seminar that I'm talking to you about is the Photoshop Down and Dirty Master Effects Seminar Tour with Corey Barker. Corey Barker is the most often imitated, never duplicated master at Photoshop. This guy is amazing, sits next door to me, and we're constantly just kind of slack jaw with all of the work that he does. He has photography tips for designers and photographers, anybody interested in Photoshop that will take your work blow it right out of the water. And it's something that you have to see. This is not for the faint of heart. This is a master level class. And it's going to New Orleans on June 25th. Make sure that you go to the kelpyonesite.com. Make sure New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm actually gonna go down for this tour as well. I've gotta go take a look at it in New Orleans. So June 25th, I hope you guys join us. The other thing is Photoshop World. Make sure that you go to photoshopworld.com. This is the conference, a multi-day conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. September 3rd through the 5th, 2014. The world's best instructors are going to get together for multiple days teaching you everything in Lightroom, Photoshop, lighting, photography. You're not going to want to miss it. It's the best of the best and it's in Las Vegas this September. Now, what do I want to do? Just a quick tip here. Uh, on Facebook, on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash photorc, I usually post whenever I'm doing tapings of classes. That's what this entire episode is about, answering your questions. Ben Bunner had said, I want a tip on focusing in really low light, like inside an abandoned building. Now, Ben, if you're inside of an abandoned building, you're probably gonna need one of these. It's a flashlight, right? Very simple. You can get this in variety of intensities, however, you know, whatever it is that you want. The one that I'm using here, I actually got from a friend of mine, my friend Jay, who got me this uh, Streamlight ProTac HL. This is an extremely bright flashlight. So, Jay is a fan of flashlights, so he's kind of a bit of a flashlight connoisseur and he's like this is like the mac daddy of flashlights so the streamlight protac hl you can get whatever flashlight you want up to you it doesn't have to be this one but what i like about a really bright flashlight is this you set your camera set your camera to single don't set it to continuous right so a beep and lock obviously you're probably going to be in a tripod if you're inside of an abandoned building set it to single set it to on the tripod turn your flashlight on light one spot get that one spot, get it to beep and lock. Once you do that, click your flashlight off and set your focus back to manual. That way, when you hit the button again, it's not gonna start seeking. It's in one spot, nothing's gonna move in the dark, and you'll be good to go. The reason that I like carrying a super bright flashlight is on the off chance that you're inside of that dimly lit environment, you might wanna try light painting. So you can put a little bit of baffles in this, maybe some tissues, you can kind of try to snoot it with some cinefoil, some aluminum foil, and then you can kind of paint in one spot with a super bright flashlight. You can't do that with just a conventional flashlight. So you never know. You can get into that one spot and your inner Dave Black could come out, you'll be good to go. Now, uh, contest time. What do I want to tell you? We're thinking, we're, this is episode 63. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the Kelby One website. At the Kelby One website, go under webcasts. Under the webcast section, go to photography tips and tricks. That's who we are. Obviously, you can take a look at the other shows as well. Right now, this is showing episode 60, but the one that you're looking for is episode 63. Click on that one. Because once you go there, you're gonna wanna go all the way down to the bottom. All the way at the bottom of all of these episodes, there's gonna be a section for submitting a comment. This is where you're going to leave us a comment. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like, tell us what you wanna see. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching this on Roku, you're watching this somewhere else, that's where you wanna go. You wanna to go to the Kelby One site for episode 63, make sure you submit a comment there. The winners of this will get an Expo Disc, 77 millimeter, right? Custom white balance, this is a great way to do it, right? Very quick, very easy. And lighting for digital photography from snapshots to great shots by the incomparable Silarina. Now, thanks to Peach Pit for this. And it's important to be able to mention that we do have a Peach Pit ebook deal. 
make sure you go to peachbed.com slash Kelby1, enter in the code Kelby1, and you're gonna get 40% off of this ebook. Now, this is a great way for you to get to your photography over to the next level. You can do that by having great literature and Peachbit is the best at this. You get 40% off of this ebook. All you gotta do is go to peachbit.com slash Kelby1. Now, we're also going to give on top of these two things, we'll give you a seminar ticket to Corey's <laughs> seminar. So if you wanna see Corey in a down and dirty and you happen to win, Guess what? Not only do you get the expo disc, not only do you get the book, but you also get a ticket to Corey's seminar. You just have to tell us what city you want that in. Now, the last thing here. We were talking about this website where we were showing all of the stuff with Arnold Newman. This is a great resource on composition, right? So it's viz, visual rhetoric, visual culture, and pedagogy. If you want to take a look at this one article, I made it a lot easier for you. Rather than remember the whole URL, go to bit.ly forward slash, ooh, zoom back out, zoom back out. Come back out, buddy. There we go, 605 emails in an inbox. Don't worry about it, that's totally cool. That's bit.ly forward slash Arnold RC1. So if you wanna see that, that's where you would go. That's gonna bring you to this article and it'll talk about composition and framing subjects and the kinds of work that he did. I think a historical perspective always helps kind of get that inspiration flowing in your photography. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, make sure you Facebook us, facebook.com slash photo RC or find the Kelby One group page on Facebook. Let us know what you wanna see here on Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care. <laughs>